Over the years, the Central Housing and Planning Authority, CHNPA, has developed hundreds of housing areas, yielding thousands of house lots, the majority of which has since been given out to Guyanese. To date, however, a significant portion of those house lots remain unoccupied. Many of the recipients remain unable to start construction, while others have been saddled with lots that are in areas that are underdeveloped and without basic infrastructure. The inability to start construction is particularly prevalent among Guyanese at the lower end of the income bracket. As the years go by, and as the cost of construction continues to increase, for these Guyanese, the dream of homeowners was becoming harder and fast fading. The Housing Solutions 2017 and Beyond is an initiative of the CHNPA in which affordable housing will be provided to the thousands of Guyanese that was left behind from the previous housing drive. These are the low-income earners, state employees and youth. CHNPA has identified 15 communities in six regions to begin construction of these houses for these categories of Guyanese. The houses to be constructed are a mix of multi-storied apartment buildings, duplexes and single-family homes. The Housing Solutions 2017 and Beyond Exposition was conceptualized to present the new model for housing to Guyanese. The idea of the expo went through a gestation period and only came to the fruition following numerous engagements with various partners, consultations with stakeholders, and discussions with investors. It was only in February 2017 that works on the expo got underway. In February, CHNPA formally signed contracts with developers to begin the construction of the model village of homes for the expo at a site at the Perseverance Housing Scheme on the east bank of Demerara. Fourteen contractors had been contracted by the CHNPA to construct their own version of low-income homes and present these as alternative housing to the government options that would be on display and for sale during the expo. Acting Project Director of CHNPA Omar Narain shared what criteria and specification the private contractors had to satisfy to participate in the expo. As it relates to the criteria, um, what we at CHNPA try to enforce is a transparent process. So the first step was to do a public advertisement, an expression of interest to get persons on board, and after which we did a short listing. Um, they had to submit evaluation, uh, seven evaluation criteria. Um, they had to submit their GRA compliance, NIS, their business registration, bank statements, authorization to seek reference from the bank, their core technical team, liquid assets and credit facilities, and their plans and layouts. In addition to that, uh, we also did due diligence background on these exhibitors to ensure that they have sufficient human resources and financial capacity to execute the project within the stipulated time frame. There are three types of buildings, the low income building, roughly the size of the land is the size of the land is um, 80 by 45, and on that, on that land, we want to build a building of 600 square foot. There is also the moderate income land, 80 by 62, and we want to build a 900 square foot houses on that. It was explained that the CHNPA will be using its existing resources from its 1,000 homes project to build its eight units. The authority would be constructing duplexes of three designs and two flat houses. With the Housing Solutions 2017 and Beyond Exposition set for May, the CHNPA and the developers were given just over two months to construct the houses. Work started almost immediately. Guyana, Guyana, from the 26th to the 29th of May 2017. Perseverance Housing Development, East Bank Demarara. Everybody must come. Expo Housing Solution. Expo. The idea of the expo was conceived by the minister responsible for housing, Valerie Adams Patterson. And there were times when she felt as though the idea was under threat from different forces. 
Minister Adams Patterson, however, remains committed to its execution as she was passionate about the view that the right to adequate housing is a universal right that must be afforded to all Guyanese. I've had men, fathers, who came to my office and wept because they've been waiting for a house lot over 20 years, 15 years. I've had pregnant women come saying that they were thrown out of their homes. They have no place to go. Friends, colleagues, comrades, this situation is a critical one. It is grievous to have to try to find an answer to people who say, I have done all that they asked me to do. I followed the rules. I called when they told me to call. But up to now, after 15 years, I still do not have a house lot. I want to say to those people that we have heard your cry. We have seen your affliction. And we have started a path to bring you a resolution. And this part starts with this project. The unveiling of the model village to Guyanese was a four-day event which attracted Guyanese from all walks of life who were being given a renewed hope to own an affordable home through the CHNPA housing drive. The expo opened on May 26, the day of the country's 51st independence anniversary. Before the massive gathering, Minister of Communities Ronald Balkan sought to provide context as to why new focus of partnering with the private sector to provide house lots and not serviced lots. He related the state's earlier inability to efficiently construct homes and provide them within a timely manner. The location of this project that was started here represents an acknowledgement that a new approach is needed. This project, known as the 1000 Homes Project, started in 2013. And on May 19, 2014, the first batch of 50 houses started construction. One year later, by the end of May 2015, or the time that this administration acceded to office, none of these 50 houses could be occupied. It immediately informs us that the approach was wrong, that the state is not geared to be an efficient builder of homes. On paper, it may have appeared to represent an option to deliver a cheaper unit, but the practice informs us differently. The role of the state should be as a facilitator and to create an enabling environment and to allow the private sector in an open and competitive process to produce the goods. First Vice President and Prime Minister Moses Nagamutu notes the significance of the opening of the Expo on Independence Day. He also reminded Guyanese that the dream of home ownership is not lost. For all the promises that we could ever make to our people, the basic right to housing should always be most prominent on the agenda. So that in the 51st year of our independence, as we still grapple with a shortage of housing and housing units, we commend the organizers and the shakers and the movers of this expo and this new drive for showing Guyana that we have not lost the dream, that it is still possible that we could house all of our people decently and not only house them, but to make the housing affordable for low-income, middle-income, and high-income people. The Expo gave those who attended a real-life experience of the houses. Instead of using their imagination, the public was given the opportunity to walk through the houses to look 
and get a feel and interact with their designs. With several local home furnishing companies on board, the CHNPA was able to outfit several of the houses with furnishings, thus giving it a more homely feel. Oriental Furniture Store furnished about three of the homes. Representative Michelle King shared how interested homeowners can work with her company to furnish their homes. We do the furniture, so we, we decided to come out and show you what we have and what we have to offer and the different types and sizes so you can accommodate your space. There were also persons on hand to answer questions about the units. Additionally, there were information booths where persons could visit to get information on application processes and updates on existing applications. Other features of the exposition were construction services and financial institutions for persons who sought to go with the option of constructing their own homes. This is our block. You have a solid block. This is a regular hollow block. The expo features a cluster of 25 houses in a model village, eight of which were the new units that would be the feature of CHNPA's new affordable housing program. The others were the options made available to the public from the private participating contractors. These contractors sought to construct homes that showcased their product, designs, craftsmanship, and new building technology they had to offer. A bit not one of the boats, but it's a bit above the rest because we do kind of futuristic design. And that's, that's that green one with the gray roof up there. We put a lot in what you call space savers in terms of every square inch of the place we put used to it. Where you're not expecting something to be, it would be there. It will have a shelf hidden here, there. Even for people with firearms, we, have, we cater for that. You know, so it, again, I haven't seen a lot of the houses are wrong. But given that, I mean, it would take in a look at. Together in three companies, we have manufactured a timber frame home using all prime quality green hard timber on the outside and on the inside, other lesser known tropical hardwoods. The home has been designed for a moderate income family. Uh, this home is actually 5,000 square feet land and 1,400 square feet is the actual home. The home itself is 700 square feet below and 700 square feet above. What we have done to accommodate the house for family with multiple, um, let's say about three or four children, we, while it's a small home, 26 by 26, we built vertical to allow the home to be able to families to build behind the home later on rather than building up. So horizontal wise, they can expand upon their home. We feel very honored to be a part of this situation. I think that it's a very good situation that allows a lot of the collaboration between the international groups and the local groups to develop whatever potential is here for housing and various other types of uh, facilities to provide housing for people who are middle income and lower income. Um, I'm very impressed by the amount of participation that's taking place and I think it will open the doors for Guyanese to expand their own local potential to provide housing, not necessarily only in Guyana because we have special woods and various other types of natural resources that can be made available to the international community if it's packaged the right way and marketed the right way. But as I say, I, I would like to really give some special recognition to the minister, Mrs. Patterson. She was very encouraging and helpful. And um, it's been very good for us. I'm looking forward to the next adventure and we'll be able to prepare our company for a lot, much, um, a lot larger participation. Seeing was believing. When the CHNP initially began talking about constructing duplexes and single unit as affordable housing for the low to middle income earners, there was a lot of noise and a lot of distorted comments. But having experienced the vision behind the government's new housing program, many were impressed. They shared their impressions. Well, you're giving people a fair chance um, and they can have an idea of what they're working with, right? So, um, and the furniture people are there even to 
give you an idea how what your home should be looking like. Um, so I think that I think that's that's I think that's good. It that works out well. Yeah, I think it's a good, very good idea by the government to do this, and at least it's very informative to me. I came here and go away better for the whole thing. And I think I will. I got a few numbers from some of the guys and I'll call them and try to see if what could be done. Probably get a house that is within my range or something. What I admire about this was the innovative thought of the government, you know, and the different style of houses. At least you can choose, you know, from the variety, the, the building materials that were used, you know. You can, you can actually ch choose. Man, you know, yeah. Whoever it is that formulate this, I guess. Kudos to them. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Superb. Marvelous. Um, you can you cannot go nowhere else in Guyana and see good architecture structure like these that they are advertising. Very wonderful. It's captivating. Um, I've seen some interesting homes and at my age with financing, not at my age. Um, the duplexes are not bad, but I think they're pricey. Um, I like quite a few, this one especially. So I'll be encouraging my children because I'm too old for mortgage. This is the first of its kind that I've been to in Guyana. I think it's a great move by the present government. Um, the cost of the houses, some of them are a little exorbitant compared with the wages of Guyanese, normal Guyanese, but I think it's a great move. And if they can look at further steps to improve um, ways of accommodating you know, Guyanese on the whole with that minimum um, salary scale, I think it would be a great move for Guyanese. One of the features of the Housing Expo was a lottery, or raffle, which allowed for one lucky recipient to win a low-cost house lot. That lottery was drawn on the third evening of the Expo. 67-year-old Georgina French Edward from East Rumvelt won a house lot. When Georgina's name was called as the winner of the lottery, she says she felt like she was living a dream. She could not believe that she had just been given the opportunity to own a house lot after being denied for 17 years. Words cannot express my gratitude to this government, the Minister of Communities, also the Minister within, Mr. Valerie Patterson, for this bringing up this initiative and most of all, I would like to thank Mr. Nelson because I keep coming here all the time, every month, every other month. And the last time I was here and I didn't get through, I started to cry. And his words were to me, don't give up. Keep praying, keep praying, don't give up. And every time the doubts come within my mind, I always remember those words keep ringing in my ears, and I keep praying. So I give God thanks. The 67-year-old vendor had almost given up hope. Edwards first applied for a house lot in 2000 when she was working at the courts. She says that her current housing situation is not up to standards. While she does not pay rent, the owners are waiting for her to move out to break down the house. She's thankful to the government for getting her out of that situation. That which was conceived as a thought was fully developed and came into fruition. It has been hailed as a resounding success not only by the public, but the chief executive officer of CHNPA, Leland Saul. I was in um, Solution 2017 and beyond the exhibition. Um, we are very much satisfied with the response that we have received from the public. Um, from all indication, um, the majority of um, persons interviewed have shown a preference for the single unit um, elevated. As you're aware, um, the, the CHP had on display two single elevated units. And so there's a preference for that. Additionally, um, there were six duplexes on display, approximately 35% um, of the persons interviewed 
would have shown a preference for the duplexes. Um, I know that there is some concern about prices, but I want to assure the public that uh, our price um, is what I consider reasonable. Given the level of investment we would have put into the construction of these homes. A direct result of the expos has seen a renewed interest in the CHNPA's housing solutions and has seen scores of persons flocking the CHNPA on breakdown to sign up to become owners of these homes. Moving forward with the Housing Solutions 2017 and Beyond program, CHNPA is already examining ways to reduce the cost of its housing units whilst maintaining an acceptable standard of quality. This move follows concerns raised by the members of the public about the prices of the units that were on display at the Expo.